Hello and welcome to Abracadabra, my podcast about everything that I am passionate about. It's about talking to different people about different topics. Today I have Jo Pronger Faulkner with me. She is an entrepreneur, animal lover and nature enthusiast living in northwestern Ontario, Canada with her fiance Mike. Jo is the author of an amazing self-help book, The Autoimmune Warrior's Healing Key, a mo- motivational book about her struggle with autoimmune illness. Today, Jo is going to talk to us about her journey, what keeps her motivated, and what will she suggest to people who are suffering from autoimmune disease. Jo, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Jazveer. I'm I'm happy to be here and happy to share. Jo, it's really an honor to have you back on the podcast. And I've been looking forward to do this for a long time. And today we've got the chance. I'm really delighted to have you back. Thank you so much. Right. Joe, let's quickly talk about your book, The Autoimmune Warrior's Healing Key. And then we'll talk more about your journey afterwards. Sure. It's, um, well, it's kind of, I mean, it's, the book is about my journey. <laughs> so um, I, I started writing the book last September. Uh, so September 2020. And um, I had originally planned on it being a course for people to take. And the more I got into it, the more I realized it was going to be a really great book, just the way that I was sort of laying it out. And um, so I ended up publishing it through Amazon in late February of 2021. And it's about um, my journey through the dark times of becoming sick Um, I was first diagnosed in 2007 with complex regional pain syndrome and then from there I was put on medication and and I struggled quite a bit um, for the following few years and then ended up with a thyroid malfunction and systemic lupus and mixed connective tissue disease. So um, I had several years of really debilitating symptoms and eventually was able to figure out how to turn my health around and really get my life back. So that's the book in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Joe, I wanted our listeners to understand what the autoimmune disease is. So briefly, please explain us what the disease is about. How does it affect an individual? And, uh, uh, you know, are there different levels of it or, uh, you know, it affects as per the age? How does it work? Yeah, so um, autoimmune diseases are complex. Um, Some doctors will say that there are around 80 autoimmune diseases, while other doctors say there are closer to 200 autoimmune diseases. Um, So what happens is the endocrine system starts to malfunction and um, it often um, frequently happens in midlife. And then from there, once the endocrine system kind of goes out of whack, the, um, the immune system also goes out of whack and basically the body starts to attack its own tissues. So you can have any, any random symptom from um, even like gut health can be a sign of autoimmune malfunction, um, digestive issues, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, lupus, which is one that I've dealt with. Um, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes. They're now saying also that um, Alzheimer's is an autoimmune um, condition. So there are so many and the symptoms can range from kind of mild achy, you might feel like you have the flu, right up until like people end up with um, organ, uh, organ failure and people can die from autoimmune conditions. So it really kind of runs the gamut, which is why a lot of people have trouble getting diagnosed. For me, it took 18 months for me to get a diagnosis of lupus. Um, and I was going to the doctor every week with all kinds of random symptoms. And it was it was a real struggle. 
can't even imagine how painful it was and it's a it's a miracle it's it's amazing how you've overcome it and you're actually uh, motivating everybody uh, everybody else now you're spreading awareness about the disease but correct me if i'm wrong autoimmune disease is still being studied as we speak you know it's in those uh, you know initial stages where in uh, scientists and doctors are still discovering a lot about the disease and hence the treatment is also in experimentation isn't it absolutely you'll find um yeah so there there's a lot of studies um being done on various autoimmune diseases and different doctors will have different ideas i was told that i should maybe have chemotherapy was one of the treatments that was offered to me and i was just i was scared of that cuz i just thought i don't know that like i just i mean chemotherapy has its own risks obviously so um and i was seeing western trained doctors who were just putting me on medication they said they would just treat the symptoms as the symptoms came and every new symptom got a new pill um so what i encourage people to do is um try to find a functional medicine doctor because that side of um the healthcare system and the healthcare world looks to find root causes for your sickness rather than just put a bandaid on it which is what a pill will do the pills will like make your symptoms go away for a little while uh but they're not a cure and they're not a treatment they're just basically a bandaid it's like putting a piece of duct tape over your check engine light on your dashboard um and hoping that your car keeps running <laughs> eventually it won't <laughs> <laughs> right just for the listeners understanding a functional doctor is basically a different from a conventional doctor a functional doctor actually looks at your full history basically uh, in order to identify the root cause of an illness you know they are not like your conventional doctor if you have pain they'll give you a painkiller uh, or if you have fever they'll give you maybe uh, some other medicine to lower the f- fever but then functional doctors actually get to the bottom of Or, or the root cause of that illness and um, uh, and and uh, how, so uh, you know how did you find out about functional doctors you know was it suggested by somebody you did some research of your own after struggling with different doctors i um i stumbled across that term um by myself as i was on the internet <laughs> so it was never something that was suggested to me um the western trained doctors don't from my experience anyway they don't usually tell their clients to go see a functional medicine doctor um just because of the different ways that they've been trained so um i was lucky my rheumatologist agreed with me or or at least supported me in my decision that i came to one day that i wanted to try something different because i was having so much trouble with side effects from the medication and i remember him saying to me you know do you think the medication is working and i said i don't know like and he said well if you can't really tell if it's working or not working and all it is basically is giving you side effects then by all means you know you can try weaning off of them um and just see how that goes so once i started kind of learning more about the body's natural um regeneration that it has the ability to do that's when i started really learning about functional medicine and you know naturopathy and homeopathic remedies and the power of plants and the whole other world that i am now fully immersed in <laughs> <laughs> Okay so uh, I have a few guests over here who are listening and uh, Mohit over here uh, wants to ask are functional doctors allopathic doctors uh, do they complete uh, their uh, you know MBBS just like any other doctor or MD just like any other doctor uh, the answer is yes they do they do yeah, complete they are real doctors they are real doctors, they are real doctors mohit <laughs> they are real doctors and uh, they practice medicine like other doctors but the difference is with the approach uh, so unlike conventional doctors who rely on initial symptoms or the symptoms that they can see uh, functional doctors actually look at the full history Uh so uh, correct me if i'm wrong jo uh, when you went to a functional doctor did they conduct uh, a, a lot of tests to uh, get to the bottom of the root cause no i haven't seen a functional medicine doctor because i made myself uh, better before i needed to go and oh, see one okay <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's awesome now that's a secret that we all, we all want to know 
<laughs> yeah, so, it was it was a real struggle though, and that's what I'm trying to help people avoid now. I don't want you to have to spend you know six or seven or eight years of misery before accidentally stumbling across something like this. So. Um, yeah, functional medicine doctors are more about looking at the entire body as a whole, which just makes sense because if you think about your arm, it's not just an arm floating around by itself, right? It's connected to the rest of our body. And just like the, the internal systems, they are all interconnected. And it's just so important that a doctor considers your entire body and your entire health and your entire health history which um, I just wasn't getting with my Western trained doctor. I had eight minutes in my appointment and, <laughs> and I would come out with pills. And I, I do want to say though, that I'm, I don't, I don't want to be seen as like slamming Western trained doctors. There is definitely a time and place for Western medicine and emergency rooms. And, you know, I've, I've broken my leg and I know that, you know, when, when you need to be fixed, that's where you go you go to the er right so and and they'll fix you but when it comes to sort of the more in-depth and especially with autoimmune it's so complex and it really does involve many systems in the body um, functional medicine is is head and shoulders above you know just and it's what we need in my opinion true uh, let's quickly talk about your way of uh, handling things you know you said that functional medicine was an option but then you didn't have to go because you treated yourself before that uh, let's quickly talk about that uh, I'm, I'm really curious to know about that yes so it's it's kind of funny because it was sort of accidental so i did mention already that i wanted to wean off of the pills that i was on um, i was on some really strong um, prescription medications nerve blockers and painkillers and antidepressants and immunosuppressants so I, I started weaning off of those around the same time that um, my hubby Mike and I decided that we really needed a change in our lifestyle. Um, we had had a lot of stress. I had had years and years of chronic stress and really needed to change things up. And we decided to go down to Nicaragua and we bought some property down there on the Caribbean side called Big Corn Island. And it is beautiful. It's a tropical paradise, uh, a remote Caribbean island. It's just dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up buying property there and we spent the good part of a year there um, in 2016 and then overlapping into 2017. And over the next, over the few months that we were there in the beginning, I started feeling better and better. I had more energy. I didn't need to nap during the daytime. I was able to wean off all of my medications at that point, And I felt fantastic. And I started wondering, why is this? Because <laughs> I shouldn't be feeling this fantastic. Um, and what it was is that when you're on a remote island, you basically are at the mercy of whatever food supply they have. And in that case, it was mostly fresh, ve fresh veggies and fresh fruit ripened right on the trees and um, little bits of fish and chicken I was still eating but no beef and no pork uh, a little bit of seafood but only a few times a week so I had really changed my diet only because I had to and realized that I was no longer having a, a bloated painful belly after every meal like I did in Canada Mm -hmm. um, I was, I had tons of energy. I didn't have those aches and pains. Like I used to feel like I had the flu all the time. And so being on Big Corn Island and changing my diet was the kickstart that I needed because by the time we got home, um, about eight or so months later, I really started to research, you know, why this was, why, like, why does this food change me so much? And I've really gone even further into that. I'm now whole food plant-based completely. So I don't eat any fish, any chicken at all, any, basically no animal products, no meat and no dairy. So, um, yeah, it's, That's... it's been, it was an accident in the beginning and I've maintained that for over four years now. And I did get blood work taken last summer. Mm -hmm. And my blood work looks great. Wow. 
that's that's really amazing you know uh, how a change in location and diet affected you positively i mean that's really amazing and isn't that the whole uh, you know reason behind all the ill health our eating habits i mean the way we eat uh, in big cities the junk food or uh, you know the bagged food processed food that we are eating isn't that behind every ill health that we have every disease that we have I would I would think so. I would bet my money on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not a doctor, so I can't say, you know, for sure, for sure, but um there are definitely um there's a reason that autoimmune disease and other things like heart attacks and um you know, all kinds of ailments are on the rise is because our food has just gotten really poor quality. It's very processed. It's got tons of various kinds of sugar in it. high fructose corn syrup is one of the worst things we can do for our liver and if you look at packaged foods it's in everything um yeah it's and and dairy as well you'll find milk products you know tucked into the ingredient list on stuff that you would not think has dairy in it <laughs> <laughs> right uh, jo tell us about the initial symptoms that you noticed and uh, you know finally how it got really bad from that point Um initially my very first autoimmune condition was called complex regional pain syndrome and that one is normally brought on by a traumatic event um which when I first heard that it didn't make any sense to me but so what happened is I fell off a horse and broke my leg in four places um oh, okay. and at that time in my life I was under a lot of stress and what stress does in the body is is basically starts to fuel disease processes unbeknownst to us as we go about our daily lives but i was under quite a bit of stress and then that broken leg um event basically triggered an autoimmune reaction in my body and so basically the stress was overloading me and my body just you know started really going off kilter at that point so i did start a medication at that point um and i i started having some side effects but they they were manageable And then several years later is when I started to really notice that my health was going downhill. I had really bad shoulder pain, which was one of my first symptoms that something wasn't right, you know, on top of the complex regional pain syndrome that I was already dealing with, which most of that was leg pain. Mhm. But then I started getting this really deep shoulder ache that nothing helped. I exercise and stretching didn't help, painkillers didn't help. um nothing i did seemed to really it was like so deep inside me it was it was just a constant ache and i started from there feeling very lethargic um to the point where i would sleep all day and all night and just when i would wake up i wouldn't feel like i'd slept at all and um started just feeling like i had a really bad flu all the time so it was just kind of this achiness very very lethargic and the you know painful joints and finally they diagnosed me at that point with um hypothyroidism okay so and that that took a few months so to to convince doctors that I was sick they at first one doctor wanted me to just go for counseling cuz he thought I was depressed but as it turns out my thyroid was tanking at that point so they did put me on some thyroid medication but it didn't really help it may have I can't remember it was sort of perked me up for maybe a couple of weeks but that may have just been because I thought I <laughs> I had found the cure. <laughs> <laughs> but um from there I just started getting worse and worse and I had all kinds of hip pain and knee pain and um lots of gut problems, digestive problems. I wasn't sleeping, always feeling lethargic and then it was it was 18 months from that point to finally be diagnosed with lupus. Oh okay. And are you off your thyroid medicine, you know, now that you uh you've treated yourself, you're healthy, uh, are you off your thyroid medicine because uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, you have to continuously take it. My wife is taking it, you know, she's got to take a pill every day before breakfast and she's been doing that for the past 3 years. So are you off those medicines now completely? I'm completely off them and I also was told I would be on them for life. Yeah. And I've been uh, off them for over 4 years. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know, 
not much is known about autoimmune disease people don't talk about it and i think you're doing a wonderful job by by spreading the awareness and the book is actually just a start and you're right it needs to be an awareness course wherein people need to learn uh, you know become aware about this disease and yeah. uh, the list is endless i mean i'm looking at examples of uh, autoimmune disease uh, it's completely endless and uh, there are so many of them and uh, you know like we were discussing the research is still going on and uh, you know it's really scary but what you've it done is. on your own through your own research and uh, the strict diet that you're on it's really remarkable uh, tell us something about the diet that you are on and um, what else do you suggest anybody who's either maybe uh, in that initial stage wherein they've got the symptoms uh, to somebody who already knows and who's already on the medication what do you suggest them let's start with the diet first sure um cuz it it is more than just the food but the food to me is kind of the for me that's where i started and also that's when other people come to me and they want to know you know what's the best way to start i i always suggest food um because of what we already talked about that there's just so many toxins and preservatives and pesticides and terrible ingredients in such you know in pretty much everything that we eat so um i had been eating things like packaged um microwaveable dinners and uh lots of meat i had meat in usually my lunch and my dinner lots of cheese lots of dairy that kind of thing and meat meat is um inflammatory dairy is inflammatory and autoimmune conditions um usually go hand in hand with inflammation in the body so if you can reduce the inflammation that you're putting in your mouth that can reduce the inflammation that you have in your body so what i'm doing is called whole food plant based and it is basically um whole foods it's it's beans it's salads it's potatoes it's vegetables fruits anything that grows in nature <laughs> and no animal products so i don't <laughs> use i don't use milk or cheese i have i i put plant milk in my coffee in the morning so i put almond milk in my coffee um and we eat a lot of recipes that we make so i still can make things like pizza and shepherd's pie and spaghetti and chili and you know all the comfort foods we still eat it's just that we use different ingredients that are healthy mhm mm true to all you need to do is find it you know it's available do your research and uh, of course there are experts who you can consult like jo over here uh, we're going to tell you how you can get in touch with jo shortly towards the end of course and uh, jo let's talk about people who are still in the initial stages what do you suggest to them um basically the the biggest thing is to realize that it's possible um i used to think a long time ago that i was destined for you know living the rest of my life in a wheelchair and i really want to you know make sure that people realize that it is possible to turn your health around and to get your life back and that but it does take work and that's that can be hard for you know for some of us that are really struggling and and I was there as well it when i finally took responsibility for myself and where i had gotten to in my own you know health demise <laughs> <laughs> it was really powerful it was empowering because then i realized if i got myself here i can get myself back out so um th the mindset is really really important and and that'll take you further than anything else i think mindset is everything before you get into that uh, mode of uh, you know changing your diet completely you've got to overcome that mindset and you know it tends to happen that pain sends our brain into that downward negative spiral wherein you know you keep yourself uh, pushing yourself down 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 and further and to come out of that spiral you know just like the real spiral in the water is very difficult and the whole positive attitude is all about overcoming uh, through that negative spiral and I, i think that is the first step once you uh, get out of that negative thought process that yes it's possible because whatever research you do jo online it's all about autoimmune disorders cannot be cured 
uh, you know historically blah 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 all that stuff <laughs> and when people read that uh, <laughs> they get even more scared and i can't even imagine how much uh, you've gone through and uh, it's really remarkable uh, that you're talking to me right now and suggesting how other people should not go into that same downward spiral right uh, right so yeah. Uh, guy it's a, it's all about changing our attitude guys it, it's all about keeping it positive all uh, right now let's talk about people who sort of been diagnosed with that and now they are actually in that spiral tell us you know something about certain exercises what did you do to sort of overcome that negativity um the biggest thing for me and what i what i help my clients figure out as well cuz i do coaching for autoimmune warriors as well so um basically what's most important is to figure out your why why do you want your health back why why do you want to have good health because it, if we're just kind of wallowing in our misery and our sadness and our pain and concentrating on how much we hurt every day and i'm i'm not judging at all because this was me um it's really important to start focusing on why you want to get better and what your life will look like when you are better so i you know i'm a i'm a strong advocate on visualization and using vision boards and writing out goals and having things to look forward to and striving towards you know new things and new experiences and um I really work with people to help them figure out their why as well. It's usually buried deep where they, you know, if you ask them at first glance, you know, why do you want to have better health and they say something like, well, you know, I don't want to hurt anymore. But if you really start to to look at what you really enjoy in your life, it might be spending time with your kids and you can't because you're sick. So if you were able to have more energy and less pain and you'd be able to run around in the backyard with your kids and make new memories with your kids or take them, you know, to Disneyland or if you're a traveler and you love to travel, you know, with your spouse, sort of look at what's bigger picture in your life and what you really enjoy and what lights your fire and what you miss about your time right now being sick. What are you missing the most? What would you love to have back? and those are the kinds of things that i sort of explore with with people and that's what i had to explore with myself as well is i really decided that i wasn't happy with the way that i was you know going through life sick and popping pills all the time and getting injections for my pain and dealing with side effects all the time and that just wasn't that wasn't what i wanted for my life and i i did get to the point where i started considering ending my life because i was in absolute misery and that's now what i'm trying to help other people um avoid and get out of yeah i think there are people who overcome difficulties in their life and then they live their life happily right ever after as, as we call it but then there are people like you who overcome difficulty and they help people overcome their difficulties as well and i mean that's simply amazing and you know visualization is an amazing tool it's an amazing methodology that can uh, help us overcome a lot of things uh, something similar to this is uh, called anchoring in nlp i suggest everybody uh, to study neuro linguistic programming and an- anchoring is a powerful tool you know which uses positive uh, reinforcements to sort of change a behavior uh, every time you have negativity you use those anchors to overcome those negativity and i think anchoring and visualization are two wonderful tool wherein if you can visualize the benefits of staying happy staying positive and you know finally the benefits or the outcome of getting treated you are absolutely right uh, you you rightly said it could be the kid you know your kid the, you want to spend time with them it could be your partner you want to spend life with them you visualize having a long life with your partner could be anything you know uh, for me it was always my parents and now of course it's my wife my partner but we need to give our brain a target and that to a positive target and um, i think always remaining in that negative spiral that it can't be done is the biggest mistake it can be uh- done and jo over here is <laughs> the proof that <laughs> it can be done <laughs> right 
<laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I think I, this year too, it, well, 2020 it was really hard on people because yeah. we stopped having things to look forward to. So exactly. I'm hoping now we can all start getting back to that <laughs> and having lots. I hope so. And <laughs> fingers crossed, lockdown is, uh, you know, uh, has been partially lifted in Toronto and Ontario. Uh, mm-hmm. I hope that it's completely lifted. <laughs> right. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> right. Joe, uh, please uh, tell our listeners about any programs that you're conducting online and how they can get in touch with you. Sure. I'm, uh, I'm doing a lot actually. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I do have an autoimmune group. If people have autoimmune symptoms and they're looking for more resources, I share all kinds of good stuff. It's called um, holistic healing for autoimmune warriors. So that's on Facebook. And my website is joeprongerfalkner.com. So I have on there some courses. I have links to my books. Um, I have all kinds of information about me, so people can can contact me through my website as well. And um, I am currently working on a collaboration book. So I'm still in the process of accepting new authors who have stories of overcoming some kind of significant health struggle or challenge or um, a diagnosis of some sort or broken bones, any, basically any kind of health issue, even if it's a mental health um, crisis, and overcoming it or, or getting through it with your grit and resiliency and willpower. And this is going to be a book with all women's stories and um, yeah, just uh, getting through some serious challenges by just drawing on their inner strength and inner willpower. Right. Awesome. So you can catch Joe on LinkedIn and uh, she's also available on Instagram. Feel free to get in touch with her. Uh, Tell me something, Joe. Are there uh, any kind of long term counseling services available for I know for cancer, it's available extensively in Canada. But uh, are there any specific counselors just for autoimmune disease? I haven't come across any. So I'm not saying there aren't because maybe I didn't find any. But um they're they seem to be I mean I I guess you could go through maybe the Canadian mental health system that way and and see if there are counselors through them Mm -hmm. but um I really find that that the people that I'm helping are at the end of their rope and they're finding that they're getting the most help by taking responsibility for themselves and starting to look at their food and their mindset and their stress levels and really kind of taking an audit of their own health and becoming their own advocate because stress is such a huge component as well to autoimmune diseases um so really if if there are those kinds of counseling services i'm just not aware of them right uh, uh joe uh, i'm gonna quote a, a wonderful phrase over here hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness and I think you're that light for people who are suffering from autoimmune disorder and countless others who've read your book you are like a beacon of uh, hope for them Uh, I am delighted that you're back and we could talk about this I've been looking forward to do this I'm really happy that you came on the podcast once again uh, to talk about this important issue thank you so much I'm honored to be here and I really appreciate your time thank you Thank you so much for taking time out, Joe. uh, Guys, that was Joe Pronger Faulkner for you. She's doing some wonderful work in spreading awareness about the autoimmune disorder. Feel free to get in touch with uh, her for any uh, help and assistance. And also her book, The Autoimmune Warrior's Healing Key is available on Amazon and Amazon Kindle. Grab your copy now. There are a lot of resources available in the book as well. Thank you so much for listening to us. I'll be back with another guest shortly. Till that time, have a great day. Thank you.